I like playing tall. What can I say? There's something about this style of play that just scratches that special part of my brain. But whenever I make a new tall video, I always get one or two people in the comments who don't really understand what playing tall in Crusader Kings 3 is all about. So just to get ahead of those comments in this video, playing tall is when you hold a small amount of land personally and you focus 100% of your efforts on that region. You min-max every bonus you can in order to get as many buildings as possible. You also increase your development as much as possible in order to get your research faster and faster. And then that just lets you get more building upgrades, which is where all of your power really comes from. At the end of the day, this leaves you with an incredibly compact, small, and strong nation. But playing tall isn't something you can just explain. You have to experience it. And oh boy, now that you've clicked on this video, I hope you're ready for an experience. Today, I plan on playing maybe the tallest game I have ever played. And at the end of the video, I show just how powerful a playstyle it is by taking on the strongest computer formed realm I have ever seen. So buckle up and get ready for Tall Africa. Alright everybody, so I have opened up our game and the place I have decided to try and play the tallest game I have ever played before might be shocking to you, but it is in Western Africa. That is right everyone, we want to be turning these wetlands off the coast of the Niger River into the most developed lands in the world and turn this whole region into just an absolute powerhouse of the medieval times. So you might be asking yourself, how the heck do I plan on taking some backwater tribal wetlands and turning them into the most developed, the richest, and the most powerful lands in the entire game? To be able to do this, we are going to be abusing something very special about our player's culture of this region. If I look at the culture screen, you can see we have the beautiful Bozo culture present in these few counties over here and what this culture actually gives us are some very interesting traditions and the one that we plan on abusing this game is this one right here the wetlanders tradition the main thing we are going to be abusing is this right here building and holding construction costs in wetlands is reduced by 25 percent that is actually the highest in the entire game i think we just might be able to get our building construction costs down to maybe minus 100%, which I'm not even sure what's going to happen. Are we just going to be printing free buildings? I'm here to find out. That being said, if I go and look at our only one county, which we have right now, which is, of course, this one here where we have our capital, we have two empty wetland terrains, and then the uh, fourth terrain that is empty is a dry land. So I think what I'm going to have to do here is build a city on this dry land and then build two temples over here. So that way we can hold all three of the wetland terrains and make uh, use of the beautiful wetlanders bonus. But if I click on our capital and construct a new building, you can see right off the bat, if I hover over this cost, we are already getting a minus 40% in terms of the building cost right from the beginning of the game. And that is because our culture also has communal as the uh, ethos, which reduces the building Very construction nice speed and cost by 10%. And then our character actually has cutting cornerstones, which is reducing that extra 5%. If I go over here to our Stuart, who has 10 ability, which is not awful, and we put him on increasing development, which is going to be necessary because of course we're going to need to get out of the tribal era to really kickstart this game. And in order to get out of the tribal era, either if we do it through uh, West African pagan ways or the normal way, we will need 10 development in our capital. Um, so we will get started on increasing the development here. And if we put that on, it actually reduces the... The construction time even further so we can build some really quick buildings here and for really cheap prices so it should get us a very very good early game the trick for us playing tall in this game is actually we will need to do some conquering at first just to gain some power you know get our money rolling get a lot of prestige and then once we go feudal we can get rid of all that extra land we won't need it we'll just need i think maybe one or two counties 
and we will be so overpowered with all of these bonuses we want to stack here. Yeah, I think I'm going to go strategy focus here to buff our martial ability. Um, because we are tribal, we can raise local raiders. And if I raise some raiders right now, just to show you guys, our martial ability is the biggest contributor to our uh, commander advantage, which is a really important metric when you get into battles. And if we want to make prestige by raiding, we're going to need him to have the highest martial as possible. So because of that, we are also going to switch our um, wife onto chivalry, which gives us another plus seven in terms of our martial ability because she has 14 martial herself, which is very nice. And that brings us all the way up to 19 as commander. So I'm going to try to find some places here that um, aren't very strong. Like we could potentially raid these guys here, as you can see, and they're going to attack us. But in this battle, you can see we actually are getting a plus 19 right now in the advantage modifier, which sure should turn that battle into our favor. And now we have 15 um, gold as loot, but also you can see we gained 102 <laughs> prestige from this battle because I was the because me, the ruler of this region, was the commander, and prestige is literally king in um, when playing as tribal because you need prestige to buy men at arms, or uh, if I look at my capital, if I want to buy some stuff we do need a lot of prestige and we don't get the beautiful gold uh, discounts in terms of our prestige. So getting prestige from raiding is going to be huge here for us. So we're going to hop in this battle. We do have uh, almost 200 less men than them, but look at this beautiful commander, um, this beautiful advantage we're getting here, plus 40, which gives us an 80% increase in our damage. And mainly this is coming from uh, a few things, but that wetlanders bonus is taking effect here, which is going to be really nice for defending our beautiful one county. And we get another 100 prestige from that battle, as well as recovering some loot that they took from us, which actually gives us enough money to build our first building here. Okay, so our units filled out. We finish our trading outposts, actually, which is nice. I think what I'm going to do next is declare a war on some of these other uh, Bozo regions, because we can declare war instead of it costing um, prestige. Like, if I wanted to declare war on these guys over here, who are a different culture than us, and a different religion, you can see if I wanted to conquer county, it costs prestige and we don't have a lot of prestige right now, but all of these bozo um, regions, we can declare war for piety and it's only 25 for a county. And then we'll run them over here. I was sure to uh, cross this river first because if we were attacked them over the river, we would have, um, they would have got a plus 10 in the advantage modifier. So this way we can get rid of that. And it says we should decisively win this battle. So right away we can just enforce our demands, disband our armies, and we have just doubled our uh, our realm size. Two thousand years later. So we've been doing a good job here expanding our realm. We're only one county away from actually having enough land to create a kingdom. The thing that is just taking way too long is going up these innovations. We're not even halfway done getting this first uh, innovation online. And we need a bunch more to get out of tribal, regardless of the method we choose. In order to remedy this, I'm going to try to create a hybrid culture. Now, I was having a look, and we could do some things like invade some other lands if I wanted to get uh, some of these other cultures. However, when we took this southern piece of land here, we actually got a hold of a Bobo um, territory. And that makes it so that we could create a hybrid culture if this acceptance was at... Uh, 40, which right now it is at 30, but it is going up slowly and surely. One way we can actually increase this is if we switch off of increased development in our, in our um, capital and instead change our task to promote cultural acceptance, which will now increase the cultural acceptance by 0.5 per year. Uh, this should go up to 40 pretty soon, and then we'll be able to create a hybrid culture. Uh, from doing that, we can actually keep communal, which we want because it's reducing our costs and time for building buildings. We can then choose from some other traditions, which I think I would go with these five. And then it'll only cost us actually a thousand prestige, which is pretty cheap, all things considered. But the most important thing is I think that'll just make it so that our culture is only present in one in one of our counties or maybe one or two. That'll just make it so that uh, if I start in really increasing the development in that one county that's of that new hybrid culture, we'll be able to rocket through all of these innovations and it should help us 
get out of tribal um, a lot faster than before. Uh, we can get some more prestige from fighting these neutral enemies, like this is a battle in another war that I'm not even a part of, but by winning that battle, uh, we gain 110 prestige from that, so that already gets us almost up to that 1,000 that we need. Uh, whoa, they had a lot more men than me. If we look at this, you can see they had 2,600, but we only had 1,000. Oh, we only had 2,000. So we get 245 prestige from that, which is huge. And that actually brings us above 1,000. We also unlocked our learning. Oh my god, everything is happening at once. We unlocked our um, apostate perk, which we needed to convert religion. So let's go over here and see if we can convert to what I want to dub the tall religion. And that is none other than then Lollardy. This can be considered as the tall religion because it has both anaconism and lay clergy, which is just a crazy, crazy overpowered combo where lay clergy makes it so that secular rulers can directly can control their temple holdings. So in our capital where we have those three empty slots, we can now build temples there. We can hold those personally, and then all the buildings and even building those temples is being reduced by 33% in terms of the construction time and the construction cost, meaning we're gonna have some ridiculously cheap buildings in those temples. The only bad thing is we can't declare uh, Holy Wars or Raid if we pick this up. So I'm not sure I wanna pick it up right away. I might hold off because I do wanna do a little bit of a little bit more raiding first. Um, okay, we went to 40 cultural acceptance. So now we can actually form the hybrid culture we're going to pick up all this stuff. Traditions, we have it locked in. Aesthetic is perfect. Oh, we actually get public works from them, which is uh, which is not bad. We'll get a free technology from this. So let's form this hybrid culture. Excellent. And now you can see, instead of having um, five counties with, this, uh, with our Bozo culture, we now only have three counties with this Bobo Bozo culture. I think we are ready to declare war for this last piece of this duchy we need to create the second duchy and then the kingdom as well. So we'll run our super strong army over here. Um, I doubt they're even going to try to attack us. And it looks like we're going to catch his army here, capturing, uh, trying to capture my capital and stop him from doing that. And then we're also going to capture his capital and bring the war score up to 100%, getting us that fifth county over here. Uh, so now, since we have both these counties, we can create the second duchy here. And then if we look at the kingdom, we actually uh, only need 250 gold and we can create that kingdom, which is just a pretty successful time for our first character's life. I'm also going to move up to high tribal authority because it takes 10 years in between when you can go up to the next tier. So you can see we're going to have to wait till 901 to go to absolute tribal authority. And you do need absolute tribal authority in order to adopt Huda Ways. It's one of the, uh, it's one of the five things you need. Um, we're still mainly waiting on innovations, but we're doing pretty good on everything else. Okay, we just hit 250 gold. So if we look at the kingdom, we can create it now. Boom, there you go. When we do get out of tribal, um, I think from communal, we actually can get a further 10% reduction in our building cost. So that's gonna be pretty important. Ooh, okay, so we just died, which is honestly okay. Our character is pretty old. The only thing that sucks is that he had a ton of learning. So this is gonna lower our research speed. But I think I'm also gonna go down um, scholar learning lifestyle with my new character because I need to get uh, our research, I need to start researching faster. Six years until city planning is done, and then 33 till moats, and nothing else is really that close right now. Oh, I just realized I completely forgot to convert that life. Well, I guess it's not too hard to go to apostate with this character as well. Oh, and it looks like our son is actually intelligent, which gives him plus three in every stat, so that is quite nice. Here I was able to catch some raiders who were raiding our lands and this should give us a nice buff in terms of our prestige and it does. We get 235 from that as well as recovering the loot that they tried to get from us. Ooh. Um, so it looks like Ghana has declared war on me. I was just raiding them like a bunch and you can see we brought our 
prestige all the way up to over 4,000. If I can get this to 7,500, I can actually pick up the um, Guardian Architect uh, tradition, which will help me get a lot more development per month, which will help my research speed. But I seem to have pissed Ghana off and they're going to declare war on me now. I still think we'll win if we fight them on this tile though, just because um, our little horsies get nice benefit from fighting in floodplain. So you can see they're pretty tough, pretty strong. And yeah, so even though we had about a thousand less men than them, we still were able to win that battle. And there you go, we hit 100%. So enforcing our demands gets us more prestige, more gold. We are sitting pretty now. Okay, so I started raiding again against Ghana right after that war ended because they're just going to keep attacking me and oh, it was close, but I'm just going to keep winning and I'm just going to keep getting prestige from those wins. And if we just get 2000 more prestige, we can actually pick up Guardian Architects, which is going to be huge. Okay, so there you go. You guys can see we have actually hit above 7.5k prestige and I'm pretty happy with that because we are six years old and we have gout. So I don't think we would survive that much longer. I think in terms of the traditions I want to replace to get the gardener's tradition, I'm going to go for this religious, I think I'll get rid of this religious blending one. It will make it, uh, it will make converting into lollardy more expensive, but I think that's worth it. So we're going to pick up garden architects here, replace that tradition. We now have 200, which I think is just enough to go to absolute tribal authority. So we're going to do that as well because now if we look at adopting feudal ways you can see we're only missing two things and then before a character dies i'm also gonna go over here and convert to the tall religion there you go glory to god and now actually if we look at adopting feudal ways you can see we're just missing this last one of having 70 percent of tribal era innovations and we're almost done getting moats which would bring us to eight i think we will need to get to 10 of 23 to get 70% because it is only 70% of these uh, these top ones here. Okay, so our culture just got the Garden Architects um, cultural tradition, which is huge right now because if I go to our court positions, you can see we have a new court position, the, the court gardener, and you can see depending on their aptitude, they will be gaining a 0 0.1 to 0 0.7 development growth per month. Ooh, okay, so it looks like Ghana is kind of falling apart right now. They have a uh, tyranny war going on. So I think what I'm going to do is actually declare a war uh, on them for this county here. Because this county is supposed to be part of my kingdom, as you can see. So I'd like to have it for myself. It would also increase the amount of counties we have. We only have one right now, so... I love how it's like, even though you have a war going on for your entire kingdom, they're going to send all their units to me instead. Okay, we're pretty close to uh, going 100%. There you go. So we can enforce our demands there and we get another county. And we just got the fascination. And look at this, we have opened up the decision to adopt feudal ways. Let's go. We finally finished everything. It's been quite a while. It's been almost 100 years since the game start. But our culture had like none of these innovations research, so it really took a while to get them. But now that we have the ball rolling, you can see for a new innovation, it would only take like 14 years each, which is honestly pretty decent. Let's adopt feudal ways here. There we go. We're probably one of the first places in Africa to become feudal. Look at that. So we have tribal all over, and then we got our beautiful feudal kingdom, which I am actually very happy that we have the exact borders of the kingdom perfect very satisfying okay so already you can see we are now holding four uh counties or four holdings because of our religion it has lay clergy so we get to hold these nice um temple holdings uh we convert our our tribal buildings into feudal ones and you can see it gave us housing pens which is okay but not really what i'm going to go for we also have lookout towers but i'm actually going to switch this for these wetland farms the reason is, you can see, this is a gold making building, so it's going to get us 0.3 tax per month. But if I look at it, it actually reduces the construction time, and then we get some extra bonuses from our wetlanders perk, which is a further reduction in building costs in the county and construction time. If we go up to the next tier, you can see these values actually go up a lot. It goes all the way to minus 7% gold per 
wetland farm. So we're going to be doing these wetland farm buildings in every single one uh, of these counties where we can. Unf unfortunately, we got a temple to spawn in on the drylands. I would have rather the city spawned on the drylands and then we could have had uh, the two temples on the wetlands, but that's honestly okay. We can go ahead right away and create a temple. And if you look at the price... The full price for building one of these temples is like 400 gold or something. So we're getting a huge discount here because of the um, anaconas and bonus. If I actually look at the farms and fields, you can see we don't have wetlanders because this uh, temple is in drylands, but we're still getting minus 33% from anaconism, minus 5% for cutting cornerstones, and minus 10 for communal. So that's already a 48% debuff. If this was in the wetlanders that would be another 25 on top of that and then i think with those wetlander wetland farms buildings it would just stack even further so i'm going to build one of the another one of these wetland farms in the city we also are getting a crazy speed bonus on this uh, temple we're constructing okay so this is what i was talking about in the beginning of the video um we currently have a tribal court which is good you know for like night effectiveness and stuff but the one that I really want to pick up is a administrative court because you can see with level one, we get a further reduction of 10% for our construction costs and 10% for the construction time. Man, I'm so excited for this temple to finish in five months because it's going to have so many benefits. This is going to be like the best uh, holding I have in terms of just making straight money. We're getting a 51% discount in the castle, in our capital in the castle and a huge discount in the time. So we're gonna upgrade that for only 73 gold. And then let's have a look at the beautiful wetlands temple, which is where we're gonna get all our most, all the biggest discounts. 16 gold, are you absolutely crazy? Look at that, we're bringing it from 100 all the way down to 16. So right now, if we add up all the bonuses, We are actually getting an 84% discount and then we're just getting a crazy discount in terms of speed. So let's start building this. We have our city, which is also finishing a uh, wetlands farms very soon. We are actually going to be going up to the next era soon, which is going to be good because that'll let us upgrade these temples, which is just going to make us even stronger. Boom, we finished the the wetland farms. I'm going to go up I'm going to upgrade this one which is bring, which is only going to cost us 22 gold. We already finished the next wetland farms over here. Brings the cost down even further. Look at this 10 gold now. That's a 90% reduction in gold cost. The amount of time it takes to build this stuff is just blowing my mind. Boom, and we haven't even unlocked Architect yet. And one more perk, we're gonna get Architect, which is gonna further reduce the construction cost by 10% and then the um, building uh, construction time by 15%. Uh, this is a mistake. Somebody is actually raiding us here. Oh my God, and look at that. We have a plus 41 in the advantage modifier of this battle. Kill you nair. Oh my goodness, and that is just domination. We only lost 245 men, but we killed uh, 1,300. Okay, and I think we hit the maximum discount we could get in buildings. So let's say if I add all these things up, I'm sure it's going to be over 100%. Gotcha. Yeah, a hundred. so if we add all these percentages up, it's going to be 102% discount. But it, unfortunately, it doesn't mean we get money for building buildings. I guess the limit is 90% and I guess it would be safe to say that it's the same for building because if you look at this, this is again over 100%. So we have absolutely maxed out how cheap we can build buildings now and the speed at which we build them as well. So just 15 gold for a <laughs> for a $150 building and then you can finish it just like this. Oh, okay. So it looks like we did just pass away. That's okay because our next character looks amazing. We did lose this county here. Oh, I guess we probably don't have limited crown authority. I'm gonna pass limited crown authority. And let's see if we try to revoke this, what would happen? Oh, they actually would accept this. 
if we go for a couple sways against him to get our opinion up, I think he definitely would accept it. And that way we can just keep this county because we do have a lot of buildings here and this temple is a great source of income as well. Okay, we actually just ended up raising his opinion um, because I made him my uh, my marshal because he does have a really good marshal ability. I gave this kid a really, uh, a marshal education because I knew I wanted him to be a good commander in our army and it looks like he has great prowess and great marshal ability so he's going to be a good knight for us. Uh, we bumped his opinion up from doing that so now we can revoke his title with 100% chance that he accepts. There you go. We got factions disbanding. And now we can have five beautiful holdings again because we get this county, uh, which has the temple and the castle. So it looks like we just had a nice son and our wife wants to name him John. Got a thousand sons, all named John. They probably don't know that the cousin is the mom. Since our wife is a genius and we are intelligent, he has the beautiful genius trait. So he should be a very nice character for us to play as next. Looking at the development map, you can see we're making some progress, turning uh, turning our little piece of Africa yellow here. We have 15 right now, it's the highest in our capital. Hello so the Ghanaians are coming to raid me, it looks like. They attack me here, it says we'll probably win, even though we have about half as many men as them. That's probably a sign I should really upgrade my military a bit more. I haven't really added anywhere men at arms, and it looks like Ghana has gained a lot of strength, actually. You can see they have um, 6k levies now. Uh, as well as quite a decent amount of these horsemen and these armored footmen which are really strong units. So if we can beat them here... Oh, no way. What? There is there. There is there. So yeah, they were able to beat us there and escape. Um, which is going to hurt the income of both these counties, which is really hurting my gold income overall. But I guess that just shows that I do need to spend a little bit more money on our army. Okay, so um, I only ended up having one son. He's a genius. He has okay traits. Uh, I don't remember picking up greedy on him, but but it looks like that. Our, so since we only have one heir, they'll inherit all our land. So I think what I'm going to do is revoke all these titles away. Oops because right now we just aren't strong enough like we're gonna get raided um when this raiding debuff goes away which is gonna be pretty soon we're probably gonna get raided again by ghana which i think we would be able to fight ghana off because we had like 4k but it was this kingdom down here oh which looks like it just split actually so maybe this wasn't necessary but anyway we'll just be really strong so we won't have to worry about anybody raiding us anymore we just discovered quilted armor which is important because we can get armored footmen now so i'm gonna pick a bunch of those guys up boom there you go and now we actually have both these guys in jail so we can revoke both their titles Nani? or at least revoke one of their titles because apparently this guy has a strong hook on me and i think honestly that was a perfect time for us to take that line because we just got war declared on us we could potentially capture their capital really quickly here and then maybe just white piece them so look, even against this army of uh, 5.8k, um, it doesn't look like we would win. So I'll just hit the white piece here. We'll have a truce. And then we can still spend some more time uh, trying to gain some more power here. We're not being a very nice guy right now, but we need to get more manpower to be able to defend against all of these dudes who are coming for us. All right, so we just discovered manorialism. That is the huge thing we were waiting for because now we can upgrade all of our temples and as you can see we're going to be upgrading them for the low price of 55 gold a 90 percent reduction in cost and then also a huge reduction in building time it's going to take just six months to make these so yeah i'm going to go around and do this in as many places as i can you can see in these counties that don't have the uh wetlands like in my capital county here it is not as cheap. We are not getting a 90% discount. We're only getting a 68% discount. That is still pretty good. So we should have enough gold to upgrade those as well. We, go, we upgraded the temples. And if we look at these wetland farms, we can now upgrade these for the low price of 20 gold. And it'll just take three months to finish. And it's going to get us even more 
uh, reductions here. They're not necessary reductions, but what is necessary is getting the tax from these buildings. So we're going to upgrade that. Oh, okay. So there we go. We just passed away. Oh, how did our character get so fat? We can make a non-military duchy building in our first duchy. And I think what I'm going to go for here is, uh, and yeah, actually, I think I will go with the Royal Reserves instead, just for the development growth, the 10% from that. So we're not really pressed for money. Like I'm not waiting for our money to regen before buying things right now. Like we're pretty much able to buy it at all times. I already, I already upgraded like all the buildings in these three holdings in the, in the capital County. And then I'm just upgrading some more of these other ones around here. I'm going to also go ahead and build another temple, I think over here, or I could do one here. Maybe we have a couple dry lands. I'm actually going to do something also with our culture. I'm going to reform our culture because I realized I just picked up 2000 prestige. So what we can do is get this dry land dwellers cultural tradition, and it'll make it so that our development growth is increased in dry lands, but also the cost is redu reduced in dry lands. So we're going to enact this. It's going to take six years to establish and then um, everywhere that is pink is dry land. So we have like one temple here, two temples, um, three temples up here, three fabulous temples, ah, ah, ah. as well as a couple more that I could build in dry land. So I think that's probably the best play. That's pretty decent. I'm going to also go ahead and just construct a new temple here. And then when I have enough money, I guess I'll construct another temple here. I'm dying. Help me. Oh, and there you go. You can just see that we will be dead within a year, according to that message. And that's good. I do want to start playing as my son here. We are actually able to pick up novice physician. And uh, since he's a member of our administrative court, he's actually gaining um, lifestyle experience, stewardship value just right off the bat. So he should be a perfect character for us. And our castle just finished actually in the capital. So we can go ahead and start upgrading the buildings again for really low price. Ooh, okay, so there we go. We just died. We're playing as our 30 year old son now who has very good stats. Our wife, unfortunately, only has eight stewardship. So I'd much rather have somebody with higher than that because we're going to be a bit short on the stewardship end here. So, okay, so what I'm going to do is reset our perks here. It'll get us very stressed out. Um, we can go down scholarship just for a bit to pick up all these nice scholarship perks and then we're gonna have to go back in for um stewardship to get this domain but then also to get things like centralization which is really important for increasing increasing the um development growth in the capital you can see we're only making one right now because of our gardeners oh look at this uh we actually rolled athletic from that sh where we were being too stressed for resetting our perks that's like the best thing that could happen and we had a son who is a genius, so we're gonna start educating him as well. Okay, so we just unlocked birds. So I'm gonna switch over to, I guess, household soldiers first, which you can see is only 12 years to finish. Uh, where that's like really quick for text. With this character, because he's only 40, we probably could get household soldiers and arch saddle, which would be pretty crazy. You can see our average development is all the way up to 0.42, and it's really starting to increase fast now because we are increasing our development by a lot. We have 31 in the capital now, 26 over here, almost 20 in a lot of these other places as well. And uh, what I'm going to do next is go around and start upgrading all of these nice military buildings in um, all my counties. You can just see how quick it is for some of these counties to build stuff. So it is January 1st, 1050 AD, which is an important date because that is a date that you should unlock High Medieval Era, or it's the earliest possible date that you could unlock High Medieval Era or start unlocking it. But you can see we're missing just one technology from getting that. And we are about six years away from unlocking that technology. So honestly, we did a great job considering just how far we behind we were in the tribal era. I think we only had like five technologies unlocked and two of them were cultural and regional ones so we're only going to get faster here as my learning goes up and as our development just keeps increasing um in six years we will have household soldiers so that'll let us pick up a new regiment of men at arms as well increasing the size that we can get and then i guess once we have that and the heavy infantry 
we should just look around to see what is the strongest nation around us that we can absolutely obliterate because we do have 14k men right now which is honestly quite impressive almost holy crap almost as impressive as this abbasid empire what the heck 70k men the abbasids are going sicko mode this game that is quite mental so i think what i'm gonna have to do is uh Get those last two upgrades that I'm talking about here, the Household Soldiers and Arch Saddle, so we can get Armored Horsemen. And then I might just try to declare war on the Abbasid Empires, on the Abbasid Empire, to see like a kind of David versus Goliath situation here. The small kingdom, the small tall kingdom of Jene versus the giant blob that is the Abbasid Empire. Okay, so I got Household Soldiers, so I can go around and upgrade all of my units to the uh, maximum. It's gonna have a pretty big dent in our uh, gold income. We just got Arch Saddle. So now if we go to our military, you can see we have room for a new men at arms and we're gonna pick up this unit right here. The Armored Horsemen, which we're already getting a plus 40 bonus to their damage from our domain, which is all those regimental ground buildings, which we can make in um, these counties right here, which have floodplains. So right here you can see heavy cavalry damage plus 10% which is very very nice. So we're going to create regiment of these guys and of course we are going to yeah, max yeah, them out yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. And they get bonuses in plains and dry lands and where we plan on invading, oh my, I think the Abyssin Empire is getting bigger actually, is I made a claim for the capital of the Abyssin Empire of Damascus so we're just gonna run right in here probably sail into the coast and then try to absolutely destroy them and luckily for us as you can see if we look at the terrain this is all dry land so our armored horsemen will be doing even more damage out here I just realized something my big brain plan here was to put my troops into the Niger River sail all the way down sail around the tip of Africa and then launch an attack on them and that way I wouldn't really lose that many supplies before I got in there because supplies is going to be a huge problem once you have like 20k stacks running around. Not very smart of me. I completely forgot that this one piece of land here is unsaleable. I don't know why this is the case. If historically these waters are like really dangerous or something. But it's absolute BS that means that we would only be able to sail here and then we'd have to walk all the way through here. And these are all like mountains so you lose a bunch of supplies. So instead, what I'm going to do um, is try to find a kingdom or an empire or anything really that is near. Gotcha, bitch. Aha. Which is near the coast, like this kingdom over here. What we can do is create a claim for, let's say, this piece of land. It'll finish in just two years. We can fight these guys for that piece of land. Um, and then we'll just be able to raise all our army right here and then sail into the headquarters of the Abyssin Empire and wreak havoc on them. I don't know if this is going to come into play, but I'm going to do something else which is a little interesting, and that is because we hit high uh, medieval, we actually unlocked a new tradition for our uh, culture. So I'm going to go to the warfare section, and I'm going to embrace only the strong. This will take six years to complete, but what it's going to give us is it's going to make that only knights with 12 or above prowess can be uh, a part of my army but it's going to give us two more knights and more most importantly of all it's going to give a plus 100 knight effectiveness so right now we have 21 knights rocking 142 knight effectiveness so getting that up to 242 is going to be huge because knights do a ton of damage in battles you've got mail there you go we can declare war on these guys okay so we took their capital i kind of just rushed it lost a lot of men in the process that's A-OK -okay because now we have this tiny piece of land where we can add a um, rally point and then when we want we can raise all our units right here and just sail them right into the Abbasid Empire's throat. Okay, so we just embrace only the strong tradition. So if we look at our military, we may only have 15 to 24, but I'm going to try to get that up to max it out. But you can see our night effectiveness has went all the way up to 236 now. Hmm. So I'm looking at the Abbasid's military strength and um, we might have delayed a bit too long. Now they have 300 of their own armored horsemen, which is a bit of a bummer. I've been having a think about the Abbasid Empire and I honestly don't think we are going to be strong enough to be able to defeat them. 
they were able now that they have 300 armor horsemen that was like really our only advantage and just looking at how many how their military as well as their knights like we have a decent amount of knights we could fill this out more and they do have a high knight effectiveness but look at their allies they would have a total of like 20 uh, 37 knights on top of all the levies and they have more men at arms than us so i think what we're gonna have to do here instead of attacking them right now is just spend some time going up the uh tech trees in high medieval i want to pick up three things first windmills so i can upgrade all the uh economic buildings in our lands including these temples with windmills we can upgrade to tier three temples everywhere and upgrading the economic buildings in them and then i want to pick up castle bailey's pretty much the same region to uh, the same reason but to upgrade all the military buildings in those temples and finally men at arms which will give us four more regiments of men at arms for all of our ones that exist already plus another extra one which will probably pick up more armored footmen in so i'll just play through this on my own my character is probably going to die soon and we can play as we can choose one of our sons to play as i'll probably choose this guy just because he has more stewardship and then um i'll come back whenever something interesting happens or when we pick up all three of those technologies okay guys you can see we have 25 of 25 knights and they're all these super strong knights like i explained before with over 200 almost 250 um knight effectiveness filled out our complete uh regiments of men at arms including 1200 of these beautiful armored horsemen which are getting in crazy buffs right now and i think we should probably declare war on the Abbasid Empire. You can see their military strength is only 50,000 levies with uh, quite a bit of men at arms. We actually have more now, so I'm feeling confident on that side as well. Also, even with their allies, we still have more knights. Okay, so I am ready to, to declare the war here. But what I'm going to do first is because we do have so much money saved up, I'm just going to hire a bunch of mercenary groups um, before we start this war because uh, we do have a lot of money but um, so I think we'll be okay even if we run a big deficit from raising all of these men and I think those mercenary groups will be necessary just considering how much strength they do have so we're ready to go now we're gonna start this war raise all my uh, units over here in this land we took to be able to get closer and I think the perfect landing spot for us is actually this um, tiny city because it is in mountain terrains, it's right off the coast, we won't take any damages, and it'll take them a decent amount of time to get up there. So we should be able to burn off the um, recently disembarked debuff that we're going to get for, um, for coming off of a boat and attacking them. So here we go, we made our landing. Uh, we're we're going to get rid of this debuff right now, and here you can see the entire force of the Abbasid Empire is coming to attack us. Over 60,000 men. It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! You underestimate my power! They're gonna actually attack us first on this tile, which is so stupid because we also have a river here, so they're gonna lose a, um, not only are we gonna have defending in mountains, but we're also gonna have defending a river crossing. So that could be absolutely huge for which way this battle goes. Okay, so they hop in here. We actually have a uh, advantage in the modifier to start. Oh my goodness, guys! And it looks like we're gonna win. No way! So we actually won that battle, and you can see we lost seven thousand men, but we killed twelve thousand on their end. Wow, even though our horses were not doing a lot of damage because they had terrain penalty, they were being countered, they still got over 2,400 kills. Let's freaking go. I think it's probably a good idea to start capturing, um, first of all, this territory. Okay, so I ran down here and I took this castle quickly before they were able to send any units back up. I'm thinking I might want to just run right back up this hill, but the only problem is that we will be running into supply problems soon. Hi, how are you? Okay, they will attack us first right away. And we should get another victory on this mountain. That is absolutely huge. If you look at the damages here, we lost 
almost 10,000. So we're, we're losing a decent amount of men, but we killed uh, almost 18k that time. Okay, so over here, I'm going to try to spread our units out just to be able to um, regen some supplies, as many supplies as possible. And then as soon as um, we can get as many supplies as possible without getting greedy, I'm going to run all my units right back up the mountain to get ready for the next attack. Oh yeah, and there they are, right on cue. Ooh, I couldn't make myself the commander, actually, because our commander who was really good in the last battle actually got his arm cut off it looks like so he lost some of his uh his martial ability and what i can do also is pick up a strategy focus to give us even more martial ability and then finally i can put our wife on chivalry to give up give us even more martial ability bringing us to 26 so now i'm actually a 31 tier commander of this army and they're going to come attack us here again of course we didn't let our supplies drop to starving, which is good. If we can keep them at very low, I think we should win all these battles. Oh, and we're actually getting a uh, advantage modifiers here. That is huge. I think what we should also be doing is probably hiring even more um, mercenary groups. And then raising more armies over here and bringing them back to uh, replenish this army. Already you can see we brought them down to uh, 44,000. They do have a new ally, which I'm not a fan of, but I think we might have a shot in this war. I was taking, I was trying to take this other county over here and they came in and attacked us, but I thought we were for sure gonna lose. But uh, it looks like we actually squeaked out a victory and killed 10, uh, 10 more thousand men than we lost. Let's go. crazy sequence of events there we died so we're playing as our son now who's 14 years old we were in two battles at once we lost the first one we were able to win the second one and i think we squeaked out i think we end up we did end, still end up killing more men than we lost there so that is huge and here we should be able to replenish our supplies yet again okay he's decided to attack us again this time with only one unit he's really coming in like one at a time so we should get a nice victory in all these guys because they're just trickling now. I think it might just be time. We have 63 supplies. Should we just run in here and try to capture their capital? Oh my goodness, guys. So we're doing it. We're capturing their capital. They are still attacking us, but it looks like we're going to come up with a victory here. And we do. We still kill more men than we lose. And now we can finally start the siege, which is going to take five months because we do have a lot of siege units. And when we win this siege, we will get rid of this defender controls war target um, penalty and hopefully take it to close to 100%. Oh, they're coming back for another battle, but we're able to defeat them again. Let's go. Okay, let's go, guys. So you can see I use the assault fort button where you get to um, you burn through your units really quickly but you get a lot more uh, siege progress and we are able to actually capture it right before they were going to attack us. Oh my goodness. So we can enforce our demands, disband our armies and we have taken over the capital of the mega Abbasid empire as our tiny little kingdom here. So I don't know if this video is proof that playing tall is a super fun and overpowered way to play CK3, but we have just went completely mental against one of the biggest empires, one of the biggest computer formed empires I have honestly ever seen. And we were able to beat them in a war where we had to sail halfway across the world to fight them. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, we're kind of in a little bit of chaos right now because we still are playing as a kid as our king just died. but. 
I think uh, once we get a spouse here, we'd be able to set up our uh, domain. So they'd be pretty, pretty nice. And we'd get our gold ticking positive uh, back again. But oh man, was that just a crazy war. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. As always, I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace out.